everyone, Kat here, your favorite ginger bibliophile. So we're doing a nice belated January wrap up and we might get some puppy visitors. I just gave them their breakfast since Franny was pitching a fit there in her fussy teenage way. And little man's finishing up breakfast before she snags it from him. She's a weirdo. She will share her wet food, but kibble, she will fight you for. So of course we've got our trusty Hogwarts notebook because I am never going to remember what I read otherwise. And it was a fairly good month if we ignore personal stuff. I managed to read 14 books, six of which were off of my TBR bookshelf. So that brought us down from 87 to 81 books, but then I bought one this month. But hey, it was only $3 and it was hardback, so you know. That couldn't be helped. Amazon told me I had to if I don't want to pay shipping. <laughs> so, of course, we're just going to go through this in order. Half of that will be, you know, grabbing some here and then in editing. I will put some pictures up somewhere of all the books that I got off of Kindle Unlimited or already had, yeah, downloaded as trying to clean out a little bit off of my Kindle. Because I only have like 700 on there that I've gotten for probably like free or like 99 cents mostly free and still have not read so the first one i read if is somewhere in this pile <laughs> i had to go from biggest to whatever not in order so we started off with tim dorsey's hurricane punch which is another one in the sergey storms series and of course it's about hurricanes because it's in florida they love having their hurricanes and he decides to be a storm chaser but he is still sergey so you know he's still gotta off some people as you know vigilante you know teaching people manners but I, I i love him it's we already know who the killer is in every book but we don't know who the victims are and how that's going to happen but the fun part of this one is there is articles about a murderer in the newspaper and he's getting mad at writing editorials, you know, yelling at people, how dare you give them credit, or, you know, who is this guy trying to pretend to be me, and, like, is he off his meds again, and he doesn't remember that he did this, or is there actually somebody else that's also is, you know, out there as he is, because they're, they're all very creative endings to people. So, yep. I actually, I, I enjoyed this one uh, quite a bit, and it, it was less scatterbrained than some of the other ones. And every single person, like, all the main characters are seeing shrinks. Except for they're all, you know, very low budget, and some of their shrinks need some help after dealing with their clients for this one. So, it's a good time. You just sit there and giggle and shut your brain off. And then I read Rebel Rose by Emma Therialtz. And this was a, a Kindle Unlimited find. It's another Disney book. And as the name implies, it's about Belle. And this is actually a more like in-depth. Like Disney is usually very young. This one actually had a, like a lot of politics because it was basically, it was written in the time period around the French Revolution. And of course, you know, Belle wants to be in Paris, but they go and yeah, it's, oh crap, we kind of got to get out of here because, um, yeah, you have to go pay respects to the king because this is, it takes place pretty much right after the curse. And so they're like, okay, yep, we're newlyweds. We have to go get back into society after, you know, this 10-year curse has gone on and you've kind of disappeared. And she gets a premonition from this random, so she's like, I'm just going to wander down this alley. So something is telling me I need to go to this store. And it's a store of mirrors. She picks one up because what's happening in Paris might happen where we're at if we don't get home now and stop it. And prove that we're not pieces of crap trying to tax everybody into oblivion and go, ha ha, I'm rich, like they're doing in Paris. And there's all this intrigue and backstabbing and relationships and magic. And 
it's actually got some depth to it. And it was just a good old time. And then I read another from the Payne and Jones series by Chris Kosneski, which was Sign of the Cross. And this book is going to tick off quite a lot of people because, as the name implies, there is religion involved and you either, you know, hey, you don't believe in it, you don't care, or you can accept that this is a work of fiction or you're gonna get your panties in a bunch. That's just the only options when it comes to getting into Christianity being in a book. And this one, it does kind of go, hey, so yeah, this became about due to, well, hey, we borrowed this from this religion and this happened with the writing. And of course there's all the, you know, history and the cults. So yeah, do with that what you will. But as always with, their books, there is history, there is adventure, there is murder, and it's tied back to, you know, whatever they're digging on, which in this case is, hmm, is the Bible real or not? Like, where did all this come from? Hey, we know this has been edited and there's various versions. And somebody's mad at a kitty there. Well, my guards were mad at a little kid in a wagon again. And don't you even think about it, little man. Mm-hmm. He always thinks he's so sneaky, putting his head out the curtains to yell at people. But yeah, basically this comes of, hey, there's some kind of like cult secret about some passage that is getting a lot of people killed and the Catholic Church is behind it. We don't know how, we don't know how we're going to prove it. Is it the whole church? Is it a little secret segment inside the church? We all know, but the Vatican is involved and there's murders. So yeah, decide whether you want to read that. If that sounds intriguing, if that sounds like, oh, how dare you? Yep, yeah, that's your own personal business. But if you don't care, you just want some action and some traveling all over Europe and some good murder mystery, and of course, them taking digs at each other on occasion is a good time. And then what was the, ooh, Witch's Rain was the next one I read. So I'm just looking at my list and going, hey, this is the order I read things in. And this was a really fun one I picked up at my favorite used bookstore. And it reads like a sequel, even though it's the first in the series. And that's because it's actually a spinoff, which I did not know when I picked it up. I'm like, hey. It says it's book one, so I should be able to start with it. And it is book one of a nine-part spinoff. So, e even without knowing that, I was able to follow this. Because we do get enough of a, here's a bit of a history. But it starts off with, they're on the run, because, oops, they just stole something from some magical creatures that are ginormous. And they're normal human size. When they're in human form, they're actually shifters. And the, it's basically, there, like, we know human magic exists. There has been this big wall built up to contain all the magical creatures and keep them separate from humanity. And so they're basically, like, infighting amongst themselves. And the ruler of this little segment of people, which is, you know, lion, or, well, feline shifters, because as we find our main character... Her whole family might be big, powerful golden lions. She's a cute little house cat, but do not underestimate her. Which, if you actually have cats, you won't, because you already know the smaller ones are the meaner ones. <laughs> kind of like in your vanity, but way sneakier. And way more likely to accidentally trip you up and then play abused when they trip you and you get them. But we also have her little dragon friend, because they're off basically to go and collect these jewels so that the like which goddess that is protecting their clan can regain her power and better you know help them out and maybe save her brother who got into it with some genies that wanted to slaughter them all and he ended up you know completely paralyzed it's like well hey if we get you enough power you can heal my brother and i don't have to deal with my piece of crap ex that wants to be alpha but you know He's a slimy piece of crap. 
but somehow she has she keeps getting teamed up with him and has to keep him alive and so like we find out there's a flashback of yep so this is we used to be together this is what happened to my family this is why i hate his freaking guts and would not really be sad if he died but in the midst of their adventure to go get one of the jewels we get some backstabbing we get some like you know personal growth we get a lot of really fun and creative insults because at one point we find it's like hey if you start getting really snarky and threatening people and cussing they will stop trying to kill you because they just want to go Ooh, this is really interesting to listen to and you can get away so long as you're loud and insulting while you do it and so yeah we get that going on in the beginning and oh i i love her she is she's feisty and she don't like me it's like oh you got a problem with little folks meow and she meets a little tiny dragon that is also being bullied for being very tiny but she's from a very very powerful line so they have their own small girls try me and find out what happens alliance and i did find it these are actually all on kindle unlimited if you want to get the whole series now i'm like i'm going to read through this and i believe the original series is on there as well i will be restarting my kindle unlimited yo subscription here soon and getting into that more because it's magic and witches and attitude and dragons it's a good freaking time. And then I also read The Scarlet Princess by Robin Mall. Mail? Um, I'm not really sure how to say that one. This one was actually, it was, I found out about it from uh, Allie. I will link her channel down below. She had a different cover of the series, but it's, Actually, it's a romance, but it's very Merida-esque, which is how she hooked me on it. I was like, ooh, Merida? Okay, I I'm going for this. And it's basically, we have our redhead princess that was on a vodka run to a different little territory that it has a long-standing we hate you going on with her territory. And their escape route gets caved in as she's on this run with her cousin, who's like her best friend and constant partner in crime. And they ended up getting busted by, you know, hey, here's the leader of this clan that hates us because they started some crap. We whooped their butt. They're mad about it. Like, well, if you hadn't tried some crap with us, we wouldn't have killed your prince. And then, well, get over it. Don't pick a fight you can't win and then be mad you lost. But apparently they think Redhead is like evil witchery. So maybe it's back in the Salem times. But you know. In Europe. So. They're like, she's going around. Like, okay we have to like hide your hair. Because everybody wants to like either kill you or run from you on sight of your hair. Because they're just all pretty much. It's blondes and brunettes. No redheads. And like well. You bought the vodka legally. But you tried to smuggle it out. And smuggling is you know punishable by death. Because you know. That's not backwards at all. We don't care about the bad things you did, but you smuggled. That's wrong. And basically, it's just an excuse because they want to offer for being from here. But one of the, yo, royalty ends up kind of like, all right, I hate her, but I like her because she's giving me crap. <laughs> They're very much, it's an enemies to lovers. But they freaking, they stay enemies the whole time and, they, they want to, you know, their women are supposed to be sweet and demure and have no opinions. Just very quiet, you know, seen but never heard except for to ask what's for dinner. You know, proper women. And she keeps a sword, and, you know, on her hip and a dagger strapped to her thigh. And try me. So, which comes in handy and she ends up saving some butts that don't deserve saving. And they're ungrateful about it, but... And it turns out she actually has a little bit of magic as well, but shh, magic is just because she's a redhead and evil, you know, to their conspiracy minds. So, yeah, they got the whole, like, oh, well, we're, we're going to have a whole festival to decide whether we want to kill you or ransom you. And actually how we want to kill you, because they're just a bunch of slimy pricks. But I just love her attitude the whole freaking time. Like, I'm not a romance girly. That's why I love Meredith. 
Yeah, I'd rather, you know, get into sword fights and ride my horse and be stuck with somebody. And even while she's crushing on this dude, she still half the time kind of wants to stab him. And, oh, you want me to dem be demure while you're threatening me and mine? Oh, if you're going to kill me anyway, bring it on. Let's see how many y'all I can take out is pretty much her attitude. So, it's a good time. There's actually, there. it's a whole, I think it's a four book series. Again, they're all on Kindle Unlimited. I just read the first one and was like, okay, it's good, but I want a different genre right now. So I ended up, honestly, I'm surprised this next one was on Kindle Unlimited because it's an author that if y'all been following a while, y'all know, but I don't read as much anymore. It was The Recovery Agent by Janet Ivanovich, and it's a new series of hers. There's two books in this series. Only one of them is out right now. And again, this one actually... It's got some fresh characters, fresh kind of take. So it was good. I, I kind of was like, all right, you need to just, you know, shank this dude and be done with it. But then you wouldn't really have a series because you can tell this is going to be a running thing of we have the chick that, that this. she's a recovery agent. She gets paid to go find people, find items and bring them back to their rich owners. And one of the things she ends up, you know, going, hey. Yo, know, her grandma talks to her, like, her dead sister? I forget exactly the relation, but there's a dead relation that, you know, visits the grandma and kind of guides them along the way. He goes, yeah, you know our family house that you gave to your ex so you could get the heck away from him? Just, here, if this is what it costs to divorce, you, you can have it. Well, there's actually some buried treasure to do with that house. Go find it so we can sell it, make enough money to you know, bring the town back after, you know, a storm completely devastated and everybody's, like, homeless and selling out for pennies so they can't actually afford to go anywhere else. But, you know, they currently have no food, no roof anyway. So she's trekking through the jungles with her sleazy ex. Like, yes, it's a family house and family heirlooms, but you gave me the house to get rid of me, so it's all mine now and I want to cut. Just, you know, sleaze bag. But the whole time, I'm like, well, okay, I'm actually in love with her, and she's still hot, but I was a drunk, cheating slob. But I can't admit that I still like her, so I'm going to keep being a sleaze bag while trying to kind of be nice, trying to get back with her, even though she hates his guts. She's like, he's hot, but I still want to shank him. <laughs> so we've got that going on the whole time with a cast of ridiculous characters. Like, we end up with, you know, dealers that are, um, Selling the typical how you get rich, yo, know, South American product. And they're not even really the bad guys. They're actually like, well, they're, they're the good bad guys versus the bad, bad guys. And I, I just love all the snark and the what the heck. And they're just all kinds of adventure and explosions. And it's a good time. I might have to actually pick up the second book in the series. And then there was... Lincoln Child's redeeming Full Wolf Moon, which is basically, it's, yeah, he's a self-proclaimed enigmologist, which means, hey, werewolves, UFOs, all this Bigfoot stuff that's supposed to, like, be fake, yeah, it's real, and hey, I found it, you're not crazy, you really are being, like, haunted and attacked by mythical creatures, and so there's, you know, of course, the murder that draws him in, <clears throat> and, like, Okay, so we don't want to say this, especially as a park ranger, but I think there's a werewolf off in people. And we eh, suspect these people because, you know, they're loners and they're weird and they're kind of mean to the locals. But, of course, that's way too easy, so it can't be them. It can be, but it can't be. Hmm. But this is really, he redeemed himself after the last book that I read by him that made me mad because it promised all this Egyptology and then... Didn't really have any. No, this, we we get some werewolves. And a good murder mystery. And it's, it's a good flipping time. He, he redeemed himself. Because if the name sounds familiar, he's part of the duo that writes the Pendergast series. That the first 17 of which are their murder mysteries with a, yo know, paranormal bent that is actually, like, get everyone psyched out because there's this creepy... You know, demonic magic, and really it's just very niche 
science that which to me is that's just the coolest freaking thing of like yeah actually this is really easily done but only if you understand these concepts and have these materials and if you do it right it looks like magic because that's just not your normal application of things and i love like the whole cool sneaky things you can do with science and well i mean Pyrotechnics is just chemistry, and I love pyrotechnics and pretty fire, so yeah, I get excited about that. He brings a kind of similar element of supernatural, but totally explainable. Very fun. And then I read, this one you'll also have seen a short of is Crimson Wind by Diana Farrow Francis, and I was just kind of ambivalent towards this one. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just a solid three stars. Like, I like the main character. She, you know, had some attitude and could kind of take care of herself. And it's it's exactly what it kind of looks like. We've got a very magical, badass chick. Though I do like the whole, yeah, angels are pricks. <laughs> We've got vampires and shifters and whatnot in a war with angels because the angels are the bad guys and they're very snarky and foul-mouthed but then there's a bigger evil and she is being pulled in the middle of it and there's a lot of history and betrayal and backstabbing and it has potential but it just for me it wasn't bad I just didn't Nothing really made me totally love it and get attached to anything. It had its good moments, it had its bad moments, it had its middle of the road. It, if I found another one of these on sale, I wouldn't be sad to read it, but I'm not searching it out. And then, I, like, I needed some short feel-good make-me-laugh, so I read Map Skills Murder by Leslie Langtree. And these are, like, some of my favorite books and they're usually it's five dollars a pop for the ebook but if you look on amazon or you could probably even find them on the apple store or whatever you can usually find a three book you know bundle for like seven bucks so that's the way to go or every now and then she'll have novellas on sale and that's what this one was it was a little 99 cent yeah 100 some odd page book and it's part of the mary rath series which is Former CIA turned Girl Scout troop leader. She's always stumbling into murders, and I, I would not totally discount the Girl Scout troop from being involved. Especially Betty, who is their little ringleader, and quite the budding, you know, pyromaniac, and, you know, a few other things. She likes to improvise weapons and, you know, have some nice explosions. She she's a spy in the making, and she's only nine. <laughs> but yeah th this is another just fun one of hey we're just trying to like you know find out the history of this place because it's a very small town and she randomly like the kids find a box in her backyard it has a little treasure map it's like oh this has to do with somebody that like the founder of the town that was you know killed but it was a suicide by a hatchet in the back of the head and we eventually find out who it is because of course it can't be straightforward or this is just a, no you got to get into it and it, it's you know she just thought she was talking to a llama and we've got her soon to be sister-in-laws that want to fit taxidermy into her upcoming wedding in some kind of a way <laughs> it, it is a comedic just everybody is over the top comedic mess so yeah, if you just want to laugh at some ridiculousness and feel like your life is like together and normal in comparison, go check out this series. I also read Mystery Night Murder. That was another little 99 cent novella in the series where it's just like you think. They're holding a little Girl Scout fundraiser that is basically, hey, here's a nod to Agatha Christie. We're going to put y'all all in a house and kill somebody except for the there's a storm the power goes out it's on an island 
and it's supposed to be an all weekend thing, so nobody's even gonna notice they're missing for a few days. They're, you can't get any reception. And people aren't pretending they really are getting whacked. And the little girls are trying to help so solve the murder and sneaking around to find clues. But, of course, the little girls are always safe. But, so, it's just, yeah. Honestly, you're not even sad about some of these victims. <laughs> and who it ends up being was just, oh, I freaking loved it. It, it was so cute. And in that vein, I also read The Hit Woman and the Family Jewels by J.B. Lynn. It was another one I love her, but it's like $5 for the ebook or, you know, 15 for a paperback. And there's like 30 of them at this point. They're just very quick reads. And the whole premise of this is, yo, this girl's, yo, family was in an accident. So she is now guardian of her niece because she lost both the parents and she is, this little girl is, I think, like five. And she is stable, but comatose. And, yo, know, hospital bills for a who knows how long, yo, know, hospital stay get very expensive. Especially when they are completely unplanned and you do not have insurance to cover a kid that you do not have. So, in trying to afford this, she accidentally ends up a hit woman because she saves a little boy that happens to be the grandson of, <laughs> yo, my boss, who hires her on. And she ends up having to go, um, yeah, here, here's your next contract. And it's somebody that she knows that does not want to be caught. And end up with, yo, her other family accidentally involved in this so we've got a little almost romance we've got a talking dog and a talking lizard because somehow when yo her niece ended up in a coma she adopted yo ended up with all the animals and somehow suddenly could now talk to them so we have a lizard named godzilla and it's a, just like a tiny little gecko that likes to be called god and he is very snotty to go with that name and a big, scary Doberman Pinscher, who goes by Dee Dee and is a big, sweet, scaredy cat. And we also end up with a cat who refuses to say her name, but is... It, it, she is the cliche, she's the evil cat, but she's actually very sweet and is at the vet. And warning, the doggy gets injured, but the doggy lives. This isn't a Stephen King novel, it's a nice, heartwarming, fun hit woman series so the dog the animals are always okay but it's just it all over the place what the heck we got family drama we got you know the mobster we got the hit woman who's an accidental hit woman and talking to her snotty dog and lizard it's just a good freaking time and then one that I actually got off of Voracious Readers that I signed up for, where it's just, hey, here's an email. This is a book that, yeah, a fairly new author. They wrote something. They're looking for, yeah, reviews. You get a free copy if you're interested. And it was Gingered by Ryan Murphy. And it's written, it's just, it's an autobiography, basically. Here's some essays of stuff throughout my life as a redheaded guy that grew up in the 80s. And I didn't get teased. I mean, it was like, ooh, can I play with your hair? I've never seen a redhead outside of TV before. Guys usually don't get that. And apparently in the 80s, it was not the same as, you know, 90s, 2000s when I was in school. So it's like, all right, yep, here's, I was a little troublemaker, little boy. I hated my hair because, you know, got picked on for it. So I tried to dye it. It didn't go well. Tried to shave it. It did not go well. And all the, you know, just messes that he got into that were hilarious. It, the ending does get a little more, as he's older, it's more personal about, you know, losing grandpa and, you know, finally being able to have a kid after some troubles. But mostly it's just the shenanigans of growing up as a young boy in the 80s and 90s and hanging out with your grandpa partner in crime. And there's a lot of foul and dirty 
humor of, you know, hey, I was going to be good, but then the, you know, swimsuit edition of the year came out, and mom wanted to know why there was a lot of dirty laundry all of a sudden, and what was up with my socks. <laughs> so, it, yeah, there's that kind of humor. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, some of it is written as, like, okay, I'm, you know, just an adult telling this story, but he also, in telling that story, gets into it and it's like, oh, I'm writing about when I was nine, I'm writing about when I was 12, this is what I was like at 16, and he phases into the, you know, language, and it's not, oh, I remember this, it's, oh, this is, you know, what was up, this is what I think, and he fades into it and he's like, yep, you're in the mind of a 12-year-old boy. And some of us never grew out of that humor, so yeah, that that worked for me. And then I read Princess Bride, because I wanted to do a book to, you know, screen adaptation, and I'm glad I read this once, and it does, it, it gives a lot that you don't get in the movie, but also it gives a lot that you don't get in the movie. It is not your normal read-a-book style. Like, it started off like, waiting for the book to start and then realized that it had and we also get some endings that we do not get in the movie. There is a baby in the book and some really sad, messed up ending that you will never see because there's you know, bonus shoppers of, hey, all right, the book is over. And then, you know, oops, we give, you know, hey, it's not really over. I pretended I was talking to my editor for like 30 pages. And then we went back to the story. There's some darkness that we don't get like there's a torture scene in the movie they go into more detail in this book like this is not a children's book like the movie is and also they make buttercup a lot more likable in the movie in the book she is just like why is he in love with her i, I know it's supposed to be satire like it's the greatest love story because it's really really freaking not but she is truly hateable. Like, she she treats him like absolute crap and then goes, Oh, I'm in love with them because somebody prettier than me paid attention to him. And how dare they pay attention to him. And he didn't hate it. Hmm. So now I decided I'm in love with him. Whereas in the movie, she actually, you know, slowly starts being kind of nice before he leaves. So, read it once because, hey, it is interesting. But... Go back to the movie. It's more fun. And then the last book that I read was Another Damn Darling by Mika Bound. And this was another one that I got off of Voracious Readers. And as it sounds like, it is a Peter Pan retelling. And it is, I, I love the theory of this one is, you know, it's Descendants of, you know, Wendy, and they now, they know that demons exist, and she's out fighting demons, and finds her sleazy, now ex-boyfriend with somebody else in the park on Halloween night, and, you know, comes back to go check on her little brother, who's, you know, living with her, and she's taking care of him, because the parents are, of course, gone, because, you know, hey, Disney movie, you can't have parents in that, so she ends up going, Okay, I'm, I have to find my brother. I think the demon took him. And her hellhound dog helps her find a necklace that transports her to Neverland. And, you know, in a fight with Hook, who is actually the good guy. But, you know, she can never freaking get along with, like, he ain't exactly, like, he's the best guy. But comparatively, he's the good guy in this. He's actually trying to protect her, and she's trying to kill him from the get-go. Which, on the one hand, I understand, like, hey, if I wake up in a new land and some dude is touching me, oh, I'm swinging first. And, but, yeah, you know, that just keeps on going instead of realizing that, yeah, he was touching you because you had drowned and they got you, like, on the beach and were trying to, you know, bring you back. And this just keeps on going. A lot of it is misunderstanding, but some of it is just her, I've had a hard life, I trust nobody, even if I think I'm in love with you because you're hot and I really want to hook up with you, 
I'm going to stab you first. So, like, it's a little too spicy for my tastes. Like, it, it gets downright explicit. It, it starts off innocent enough, and then it just, it, it grows. But it was just, her attitude after a while just kind of grated on me. Like, it's understandable, but at the same time, it... If you're gonna try to get a romance into it, you kind of got to ease off of the I hate you on principle and we are never going to learn to communicate. Because he keeps trying to be the gentleman and she keeps wanting to murder him for it. <laughs> Just out of self-preservation and not ever getting it together. But yep, they end up... Tinkerbell is freaking evil. Peter Pan is not who you think he is. Hook is immortal and is like a demigod and then we don't know like Wendy is a demon fighter <laughs> so it has a lot going for it but just personally that trope is not my thing and the spice is not my thing for some people I'm sure this is the best freaking book ever and it is a whole series so do with that what you will that was my crazy month of reading and I will see you soon Bye. Happy reading.